Healthcare is too expensive. Employers are offsetting costs onto their employees. Who will make health benefits affordable for hardworking Americans and their families? You will. This is the Empowering Plans Podcast, a show dedicated to helping you once again emphasize the benefit in Benefit Plan. Now prepare to learn, plan, save, and protect with the FIA Group. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another FIA Group podcast. I just first want to apologize. You know, this idea of having podcasts was an amazing idea by this amazing individual called myself, Adam Russo, the CEO of the FIA Group. But yet, I haven't done one of these at least in a couple of years. The last time I did a podcast was at the old office that we had, not here in this beautiful office of Kitten, but in our old office in Brantry. So it was about a couple of weeks back. I'm like, you know what? I have to get back to my roots. I want to talk to the people. I get to speak at conferences now. COVID obviously messed that up for all those live speaking engagements I used to have. But I felt it was time for me to speak to the people again. So every couple of weeks, I actually have a email that goes out to the industry, some of my staff, and I call it the Book of Russo. So I wasn't sure whether to call this the Book of Russo podcast or call it the My Plain Thoughts, plain with a P-L-A-N-E. Those are emails that I send out to my staff every time I'm on a flight. No matter where I'm going, for the past, I think, 15 years, every single flight I've been on that's related to business, I've sent an email called My Plain Thoughts. So what are we going to talk about in these podcasts? Here's what I'm going to tell you first. It's not always going to be me. I'll bring in guests. And who are those guests going to be? It's going to be people from the industry, people not from the industry. It might be other fellow entrepreneurs. It might be people that are starting a company. It might be people that have ideas that have not been brought up in the world of healthcare. Here's the key thing I want to make sure everyone understands. I want you to get perspectives that you will not hear anywhere else. I want you to get ideas that you will not hear anywhere else. These are truly innovative thinkers. These are people thinking outside the box. They're in their own world. And because I truly believe that how we can make an actual change, a real important change to healthcare, is by doing things that people are not doing today because all the stuff that's happening today clearly isn't working. So one of the things I want to bring up was talking about the idea as a CEO running a company, dealing with employee issues, being an entrepreneur, starting a business in your mother's basement with $2,000 and now having 250 employees all across the country. You know, nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to start a company and that five years from now, I'm going to have 200 people or they're going to be located here and there. All they know is they have this idea in their head. It's itching them. It's bugging them. And like, I have to do something about this. I'm going to start my own company. But I'll never forget about 18 years ago when we first built our first software called the FIA system. I know it's not a very original name. And the software developer sat down with me and said, how many people do you see 10 years from now? using this software. And I said, hmm, 20, 20, not 200, not the hundreds of clients that actually use our software as well, 20. So that tells you, I didn't have any idea what it could become, how big it could be. I just knew I wanted to do something and I knew what the start was going to be. But any great entrepreneur, any amazing CEO will tell you, you never actually know what it's going to become. You know what you want to build But all the different obstacles, regulatory changes, and just ingenuity and innovation that comes aboard. I mean, right now, we're doing things with our software that five years ago we couldn't do because technology wasn't even available. I mean, think about Uber. You don't think I would have loved to have Uber when I was in college instead of walking home three miles in the rain? These are the kinds of things that are going to keep happening. We're going to see things in two, three years that no one's even talked about today. That's the stuff that I want to talk about. The things that will happen in two to three years. So we're gonna talk about self-funding. We're gonna talk about health insurance in general. We're gonna talk about what is important to you. I can tell you as a CEO of this company, FIA's mission is to make sure that health insurance is available at a low cost to all Americans. But yet that every one of these people, not only is it low cost, but they actually have quality outcomes from their healthcare. So here's the problem I see today. When you look at cost, data, all the transparency stuff they're talking about in D.C., all the regulatory stuff. I just got off a Zoom call where I was looking at you know, these really smart people that went to Harvard and MIT. They're showing us this data, and they're showing us hospital charges, what their average reimbursement is from Blue Cross and Aetna and from United, and what Medicare reimburses, all that great stuff, and how easy it is to utilize and make it really good for consumer usage. 
And I said to myself, what consumer is going to use that? And if they do use that, is it a good thing? You may go, what are you talking about? How is transparency on healthcare costs not a good thing? Well, here's why. If I told you that this car costs 100000 and this other car costs 30000 what would you automatically assume? That the car that's 100000 is a higher quality car. Yet in the world of healthcare, that would not necessarily be true. So all we're doing with price transparency is actually incentivizing hospitals to make their charges higher, to perceive better quality. Cost data, cost transparency, pricing transparency, without quality metrics tied to it are pointless. So why don't you see it? The crazy thing that I see every day is, and we do a lot of direct contracting with facilities, is you hear about reference-based pricing. We all know what it is. I know what it is. We do it. We deal with it every day and have done it for years. But when you make a direct contract with a facility at 140% of Medicare, and then you're able to actually have steerage to that facility, do you have any idea how many plans out there have these direct contracts with facilities and have no idea if that facility is even good for that particular procedure? How is that a good thing? Sure, you're going to save money versus going to another hospital. But what if the hospital you have a direct contract with has the highest readmission rate in the metropolitan area, the highest infection rate? What if they work the lowest acuity numbers of all the other facilities in the area? Meaning those procedures, they actually don't work on complex ones. If it's simple, sure. But if it's a complex procedure or it's really specialized or really complicated, they're probably not the facility to go to. Folks, all that information is available, except it's not available to the public. It's not made available to you. Don't you guys think it's crazy that right now, yesterday, I had to buy a tent in my backyard? Because as many of you know, I got four kids, a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and twin six-year-olds. I remember when I used to say, I have a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and two newborns. But let's get past that. We're not going to have a dad podcast here. But I have 12 third-grade girls coming over my house on Friday night to do a sleepover in the backyard. Now, that is going to be a horrible night. That's okay. But the point is, I went on Amazon, and I looked up the word tents, camping tents, Large camping tents, family size tents, whatever. And right off the bat, I can see the tents. I can see the price. I can see the average reviews. I can see quality. I can see reviews based on different things. Affordability, easy to open, easy to put together, great in the rain. I can see reviews by most recent in the United States. Only the crappy reviews, only the great reviews. I can search by 4.0 or higher when it comes to large family tents, which are different than two-man pop-up tent that use in the woods or on a mountainside that have to be really wind-resistant, are very different than a family-sized tent you're going to put in your backyard. I don't care if it's light. I'm just bringing it from the garage. I could do all that on a tent. Yet, if I have to get a knee replacement surgery, what do I get on my network or my health insurance? I go on their website, and I can see all the facilities that have doctors or surgeons for knee replacements. I don't even see the prices, not yet at least. What I see is my copay is the same regardless of what hospital I go to, as long as it's in network hospital. I call up that hospital, I make an appointment, I don't even know the quality of that particular surgeon. You think every doctor at a facility has the same exact quality? You don't think there's the best guy and the worst guy? Listen, I went to law school. I know there are lawyers better than me that graduated above me in class. And there were some that I would never hire. They're below me. We all graduated. We all are Esquires. We all passed the bar. So the bottom line is the firm, i.e. the hospital, is charging the same amount. Amount I still don't know. My copay is $250. And they decide or I can decide which surgeon is going to do my surgery. But do I know that particular surgeon's complication rate? How many times they've actually performed that surgery? Are they using the most up-to-date, newest technology? Meaning, instead of being cut open, They might use a laser. I don't know the terminology. But the bottom line is, do they have procedures that have less downtime, less rehab versus other procedures? You got some old school guy who's still doing the same exact procedure from the 90s. And you got some new hotshot that's doing a new procedure from 2021. You don't know. That's the point. And that's the type of information the FIA group has, that we have, that we're striving for. I believe if I want to have that knee replacement surgery, I'll be able to see how much it would cost Not only the plan, my employer and a self-funded plan, but how much it costs me. Same out of pocket for everybody? Great. What am I going to look at next? Quality. Which doctor and which facility should I go to? Not just facility, but which surgeon at that particular facility 
should I go to and have perform my knee replacement surgery? I could do all that to buy a tent. I can't do that to have someone cut me open and fix my knee for the rest of my life. This is what I believe the future of healthcare is. My goal right now is to make sure that we no longer ignore quality metrics when it comes to direct contracting, steerage, having people within a network. But here's the problem, folks. You're never going to see those things in a network environment because what you're doing is actually saying that this particular hospital and or this particular surgeon is better than another. And they both in the network. All you're going to do is upset one of them. And that can't happen. You're not going to have a ranking, right? Like you see in the back of an airline magazine, we have the top 10, you know, orthopedics in the Dallas area. That does not exist. We are building that. We want to know. So if I have a negotiation with a particular facility in Cleveland and they say to me, well, the reason why we charge three times more than all the other hospitals in metropolitan Cleveland is because we have the highest quality facility when it comes to that procedure. And I can look quickly at the data and say, no, you're not. You're actually the worst quality. So you have the worst quality of all the other facilities in the area and you charge the most. This is what needs to change. The last point I'm going to make, and it's something that we've had here in place now for at least 10 years, is our diapers and wipes program. Many years ago, Ron Peck, who's my chief legal officer, and I sat down and we said to each other, man, a lot of people are in their 30s now, right? We're a young company. We're trying to build an environment where people want to stay here for their careers. And we said, a lot of people are getting married. So what happens after people get married? Well, one of two things. Well, three. They either get divorced, pregnant, have a baby, or they're divorced and have a baby. One of those three. So we said, you know, we have our network plan. What does it cost to actually deliver a baby in Eastern Massachusetts? And what we found was amazing. Our employees are paying the same $250 inpatient copay, no deductible, for any of the hospitals that are in network. Yet the charges we and our self-funded plan actually pay to a facility range anywhere from $8,000 for that baby to $50,000 for that same kid coming out. Yet all I know and my wife knows is that it's $250 no matter where we go. And how do people decide which hospital to go to? Are they researching it? No. I can tell you how we decided. My aunt had her baby there. My sister had her baby there. I was born there. They have big rooms. It's a close by. We said, you know what? Why don't we actually look at the charges, the cost, but not just that? Who are the highest quality facilities that deliver children and have a low cost compared to the median average? And we identified three. So what do we say? We told our employees, we can't force you to go to one of these three. You can go to any in-network hospital. However, here's what we know. These hospitals, on average, about 10000 bucks. They are rated A, let's say A to F. They're all A's. The average cost is 30000 So here's what we're going to do. If you choose one of these lower-cost, high-quality hospitals to have your baby at, we'll pay for your diapers for that child and baby wipes for that child for a year. Folks, the Boston Globe did a front page of the metro section on our innovative idea of fear group. They look at quality and cost to incentivize employees to care about the cost of care. I'm sitting there going, how is this innovative? Doesn't everyone do it with every other thing they buy? Everything. Yet, when it came to delivering a baby, a baby, your baby, wow, they care about the quality of where they deliver the baby. I'm sitting there going, this is crazy. Every single day, mothers are delivering children in hospitals that are the worst ranked in a particular metropolitan area. They have other options. I'm not talking about the people in rural America. It's one hospital city, and that's the only option they got. No, no, no. I'm talking about places where there are literally multiple options, yet they go to the worst ones because they don't know any better. Once we did that and put that in place, we've had over 50 people that chose the Diapers Wise program. We've saved millions of dollars for our self-funded plan ensure to the best of our ability a high quality experience for those moms and their children and at the same time we're able to have free diapers and wipes delivered to them via amazon to their homes folks this is what i'm talking about this is innovation this is forward thinking let's get people to care about the overall quality of care and the overall charges by doing that we will meet that mission of ensuring that every american has access to high quality low cost health care so my rant is over for the day. I hope you enjoyed the Book of Russo podcast by me, Adam Russo, CEO and co-founder of The Fear Group. Have a great day.